Hello friends, I am KV Rishikesh and I am currently doing my BE Mechanical Engineering and I am proud to be an Indian. Today, I am going to give you a short lecture on design of pneumatic circuit by casket design. So, let us try to solve a simple sequence using the casket design. So, there you go. example of sequence. So the first step is to identify the number of cylinders. So based on the number of alphabets, we can find out the number of cylinders. So here there are three cylinders, namely A cylinder, B cylinder and C cylinder. And the positive and negative signs indicate the positive sign stands for the extension of the wall. And negative sign indicates the contraction. So now we have identified the number of cylinders to be three. Three cylinders. So our next step will be to group this sequence into a small or as short as much possible so let us try and we have to group this one so we have to divide this group at the place where the stroke changes so here plus minus so at this place the stroke changes so I am dividing this here and for the second group here a stroke change takes place and here a group is formed so there are three groups that are formed by me. Okay. But there is another constraint while forming the groups is that one cylinder cannot simultaneously contract and extend at the same time. So in order to shorten this process here, watch here, expansion and contraction are the same place. So we have to make some changes in this grouping. So we can shift this C minus into initial condition and thereby we can form the equation of C minus A plus B plus B minus A minus and C plus. So we have shortened our grouping as much as possible to our easy. So after formation of grouping, next we are going into formation of circuit. So let's start after it. This one. So in order to form a circuit, we have to draw the number of cylinders. So as we know there are three number of cylinders. So we can draw three number of cylinders. There you can see we have A cylinder, B cylinder, C cylinder and consists of one piston inside. If we move the piston this way, we get contraction, which is also a minus as we all know. And positive indicate when piston moves this way, we get expansion you know. So we have more the plus and minus signs correctly. Next step. The cylinder cannot work on its own. In 
order to make it work, you have to connect it with a proper DCV. DCV stands for Directional Control Wall. One DCV for this cylinder to make it work and similarly for other two cases. So, now we have to give proper connection to this. Watch it carefully. The negative is connected to this part. Close connected to another. Oh, I am um, made a small mistake. Here. This is a common mistake people do. So, the negative is connected to this one and the positive is connected to this one. Okay, now we have given proper connection to this DC. We name it VA, VB, DC. As usual, signs of minus positive, minus plus, minus plus. Okay. Now, we have made the cylinder ready to work. But, while starting and ending, the process must have a control. So in order to have this control, we must have a limit gauges in order to control this. So for every DCV, we should have two limit gauges. Number one, number two, number one, number two, number one. So there you go. We have two limit poles for every single one. Okay. The positive, negative part of it, the positive part of it, the negative part of it, the positive part of it, the negative part of it, and the positive part of it. So we have given the supply to the cylinder by connecting with the DC. Next we have to give connection to the limit gates when it works by connecting it to a pressure manifold usually the pressure manifold gives the supply for the inlet, inlet walls to carry out the whole process in the plant so usually the always the pressure manifold are one less than the number of cylinders so let's mark them Pressure manifold number one. Pressure manifold number two. And in order to have a check over this whole circuit, we have a wall called check wall. So, we have the whole circuit ready in order to represent this sequence with our circuit. Okay. So, C minus is the beginning part of it. So, the C minus must be given supply in order to stop. So, let's give the C naught. That is the negative part of it, the positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So, every first part of the limit wall represent the negative part of it. So let's start with C naught. So in order to give it supply, it's connected to 
pressure manifold line. Next. I have done with, done with C, C minus. Now we have to connect this thing with A positive. So there you go. We have to connect C naught, the other side of it, to A positive. We have done with it. So the, as we have given the supply to DCV, input to DCV, we can take output from the limit valve that is connected to DCV on the other side. So the A positive, uh, we have connected to the A positive side of the DCV. So we can take the output from the positive A1 part which is having a control by the DCV. So we have taken the output from A positive and connecting it to B positive. So we have connected it to B positive. So this group has been completed. So in order to end this process, we have to connect this output of B positive with a check hole. So the output of B positive is this one. Okay. We are connecting into check wall. Okay. So we have completed this group. First part of it. Okay. So in order to have a better understanding, you have to move to the next group where you will understand better. So the B negative is the beginning of the second shape. So where is B negative? Here it is B negative. We have to connect the B negative with the pressure manifold line to make it function. So we have given supply to B negative. So we have to transfer the input to another part of A negative. So as we have connected here, we have to take the connection from here and we are moving on to A negative. There you go. We have connected A negative and A negative is in turn connected with A naught. So we can take connection from here, A negative. We have connected to sequence. So we have come to end of loop. So in order to complete the sequence, the C plus must be connected to the check as usual. You connect. Okay. As this side is closer to this one, this one indicates the first group. This should be connected first one. This side is nearer to this one, so it should be connected this way. And the next thing should be connected to this one. Okay. So the check wall circuit is complete. But we can see some incompletion in the circuit. That is, the circuit must be closed on both sides. For example, take this A0. A0 represent A minus. One side the circuit is closed, but in other side it tends to be open. So now I have now to close the circuit by taking the supply from here and connecting it to pressure manifold 2. That is the group 2 which it belongs, A naught, A minus. Similarly, for A1, we have taken supply from one side, but the other side is incomplete. So in order to close the circuit, that is A plus. We connect to pressure manifold A1 where it actually belongs. Next, we have to move on to B0. B0 is already complete and both in C. So no problem. B1. B1 B positive. So we have to take connection from B positive and connect it to group 1 where it actually belongs. Okay, so there are one, two, and three. Okay, there's one, two, and third one is remaining that is C plus. Here it's connected, but the other end is not connected. So here we transfer here C1, 
belongs to second group. One, two, three. One, two, three. Checking. Second. One, two, and three. So diagram is complete. Hope you can understand this, and this may help you during the exam times. And by the way, this is the first video lecture that I am putting on this net. Learning is so fun. Any doubts, you can comment it on my YouTube playlist. Please help me to help you.